What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Today I wanna show you what to do for that herniated disc, the bulging disc in your low back that I think probably 99% of the world has been diagnosed with. I'm gonna show you how to fix it without ever having to go under the knife. And I've actually got Jesse here because Jesse walked into my office one day at 22 I think, yeah. 22 years old and he said, I can't believe it. I had an MRI, I got a bulging disc in my low back and I need to have surgery. I said, dude, you don't need to have surgery because what I'm going to show you here today is going to do exactly what I showed Jesse and it's going to help you to get rid of this thing once, once and for all, okay? So what are we talking about first of all with a bulging disc? When we look at a bulging disc, guys, there's three different terms that people use. It's herniated disc, bulging disc, and then a ruptured disc. And a ruptured disc is a different scenario. A ruptured disc is when this disc here that's in between your vertebrae here just basically explodes and it's not fixable without surgery. But that's a very small percentage and that happens usually in a very traumatic incident. What we're talking about more often is this. This is a bulging disc, a herniated disc. And the disc starts to protrude out the back. This is what this red area is. And a lot of times you can be diagnosed with a bulging disc because an MRI tells you you have a bulging disc, but you don't have any symptoms. Because the symptoms might either be present or come and go based on whether or not that disc is actually touching the nerve. If it's not touching the nerve or making contact, in this case it's not, you wouldn't have any problems with that. If the nerve touches that disc though, then you start to feel the pain and the, and the tingling and the sensation down that distribution of the nerve root. So it could be in the front of your thigh if it's an L4-5, it could be more in the back of your leg if it's more of, a, uh, of an L5-S1. So it depends on what level and what nerve you're, you're touching. Now, here's the thing that you don't want to do and what I told Jesse not to do because he's like, dude, I've just been doing these stretches and I think that's what I'm going to have to do to start off. I said, no. Don't do back stretches if you have a lumbar disc. If you start doing the things that Jesse is doing right here, you're going to make the condition worse. And a lot of people will prescribe these for you and that's not what you want to do because flexing the spine, bending it, pulling one leg to the chest, pulling both legs to the chest, that's flexing the spine and that makes the disc protrude even more. So why do people tell you to do it? Because if you look here at the spine, the muscles that run up and down, these basically get tight from the spasm of trying to protect against a disc. So you might stretch and feel a temporary relief, but you're not only not doing anything to fix the long-term cause, which is the disc underneath, but you are actually making it worse. So instead what you want to do is you're going to do the same two or three step plan that I gave Jesse, and it starts right here at the bar. So the first thing, if you're going to fix this disc, is you're going to want to extend and not flex, but before you do that, you got to fix a couple things. You want to decompress your spine. And I know people use inversion tables and all that. And if you don't have access to one, you really don't need one. All you need is a pull-up bar. So as I have Jesse, first thing I tell him to do is grab the bar and then don't just hang with your feet off of the floor like he's doing here. Put your toes down if you can. If this is too high because you're too short, you can always set up a bar and a squat rack at a, at a, at a height that you can still touch your feet to the ground. But the touching of the feet to the ground is really, really important because it allows you to decompress and drop your pelvis. So as I reach up here, I've got a hold, but if I'm holding up here, I'm actually restricting. I'm using muscles in my hip flexors to hold me up. But as soon as I let my toes touch, now I feel like I can kind of release. And what I've done here is I drop my pelvis and, I, and I'm obviously keeping my spine elongated so I have some space here in the spine because we want to try to create at least a little bit of room so that if that disc is touching one of the nerves, we can let it off. The next thing we have to do is we either go to step three or if you're kind of doing this, that's called a list and we need to correct that first because step three won't work unless you fix step two. So are you doing this? Are you leaning away from the pain? Meaning if the pain is going down your left leg, are you leaning over here, my left leg, are you leaning over here in this direction away from the pain? Right? And if you, you can easily see that in the mirror or have somebody tell you if you are. If you, if you are, then let's go over to the wall and fix that first. Okay, so to fix that list, remember, if you're doing this because you're trying to get away from the pain, then we got to fix it here against the wall. So what you do is you'll use the wall to your advantage. If I'm leaning this way, I get myself over here into the wall and I put my feet further away from the wall, okay, from here. So that now I can take my hand on the outside and I can start to push in this direction towards the wall. Because what I'm trying to do is get my hips and my shoulders to be level again. And what that's actually doing is it's helping to centralize that disc. Because we don't want to start trying to go into extension in step three if we haven't centralized the disc. Because right now it's over here and I'm trying to lean away from it. So if we could do this without pain, then we're in a good position. You do this about 10 times, 10 or 12 times. And if you find that you're kind of running out of room, 
and it feels even better the further you go, you can always take like a medicine ball over here or even a pillow or a sweatshirt or something and you lean into it this way. Okay, so I got my lean here and my feet are over here, but now you can see I've actually gotten more range of motion that I could drive my hips through. So it's an overcorrection, but a lot of times the overcorrections are necessary. All right, so now we've done the decompression, we've re-centralized. If the list is necessary, if you're standing nice and tall, you don't necessarily need that. You go right to step three, which is going to be down here on the floor. All right, guys, so we're almost there. This is the last step, and what you do is you want to get yourself down on the ground, and we're going to extend. Now we've fixed the list, we've decompressed, we're in a good spot to actually do this thing and do it once and for all. So you're going to take your hands, put them flat down under your shoulders, but don't get lazy about what's happening below the waist because that matters too. Put your feet together, contract your glutes together, right? Get nice and tight from below. Take your hands here and you're going to start to press up. And you press up only as far as you can go because you can overextend. If I start to lift my hips off the ground here, I'm not extending anymore at my low back. I'm just pushing up with my hips and that's what we don't want. So you only go so far as your hips will stay in contact with the ground and that's it. And you, and you hang out here for about 15 or 20 seconds. Now you lower yourself back down. Recontract. You can see Jesse doing the same thing here. As he's pushing up, he's trying to make sure that everything stays in contact with the ground. That was my one main instruction for him. And to go for just a little bit more extension each time he did it. And he would find that each rep he'd get a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And if it, you can't, let's say you're in a really bad spot and it's really hurting you, you can actually just get yourself in this position right here, which is an, enough extension as it is. And you can even watch TV for about 10 minutes or so if you can tolerate it, just to try to get more of that extension in place to start to recapture that disc. Because the good thing is, guys, that disc 98% of the time will be able to be re-centralized and recaptured. And once it does and it gets off of that nerve root, you're not going to have the problems. You're going to be able to go back to lifting and doing the right things inside the gym without being derailed by your disc pain. Okay, so now the last thing you can do if you had to is during the day, you may not be able to lay on the ground, so you could do this standing. And what you want to do here is just hook your hands right, I talked about it in a previous video, these two bumps right here on your pelvis, okay? You just want to get one hand on top on one side and one hand on top on the other side. Hook them, okay? And just push forward with the palms of your hands and then lean back, okay? The same thing though, if you have to decompress first, you decompress. If you have to do the list against the wall, you do the list but then you just lean back and you're creating extension this way. It's kind of a portable way to do it because you can do that anywhere. Guys, the disc problem is a very common problem. Like I said, almost all of us, if we were MRI, would have some sort of a disc problem, but it doesn't mean it's a problem for you. If it is symptomatic, then there are ways to fix it. You don't need to rush yourself into surgery. Jesse's now been a year and a half or two years since he's had any pain at all. He's been deadlifting, he's been squatting, he's been doing a lot of things to, to help keep it nice and strong. And we'll cover that in a future video too. But for the meantime, I wanted to make sure that I got you the way to fix it so that you can get off on your way and start feeling a lot better. Guys, all of our programs here aren't just programs for working out. As a physical therapist, I care about what happens to you, not just in the gym, but around the gym because it's going to matter ultimately to how you perform in the gym. If you're looking for our programs where we put the science back in strength, head to athenex.com and get our programs. You can do that right now by clicking on the link. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and click on the notification link so you don't miss any of other videos. And you can catch our latest video up here. All right, guys, I'll see you over at athenex.com. I'll see you back, uh, back here for another video in a couple days. <laughs>